My name is James Houston. I am 28 years old. Originally from Lake Tahoe, California and Reno, Nevada. One of the things I've learned the most from going through these experiences uh, the last nine months or so is the power that people possess to come together to achieve something great. I met James Houston at a party. It was a house party that my friend invited me to. I know James through our church. We go to the same church. I used to live up Provo Canyon, so he was kind of our closest neighbor. I uh, just got to know him a little better over the years, and now we're pretty good friends. Um, I came out to Utah when I was 18 to do some genetic testing up at the Huntsman Cancer Institute. Um, found I was a carrier for this gene that causes colon cancer, and I went in for a checkup in December of 2011, and things have kind of gotten out of control. And I had hundreds of large growths throughout my entire digestive tract. My hair got really brittle and thin and started falling out. Um, the other drug I was on just caused extreme fatigue and I broke out in a rash all over my face and body and I was really embarrassed to go out in, into public and I was just exhausted all the time. I was at church and I was leaving and I walked past him and he looked a little down kind of and so I thought to myself I should turn around and ask him how he's doing. So I did and he told me that he was having some health problems and I asked him what they were and he just started telling me that he had cancer. It's kind of a little bit of a helpless thing. You kind of, with the situation that James was in, you kind of aren't really sure what you can do to help. It's a difficult thing to go through sometimes and, and life is difficult and James had one of those experiences. Um, and so it's, it's interesting and it's interesting to see how he went through things. But he, he made it sound like it wasn't that big of a deal. I met James Houston at a party. It was a house party that my friend invited me to. And it was right before New Year's and I didn't know anyone else at the party and so I was trying to get comfortable and <laughs> saw James and was kind of drawn to him. Um, I play in an acoustic duo with my friend Cami Jensen. Um, we met kind of randomly a year ago. She had some songs that she had been working on and I came up with some extra guitar parts and we kind of decided to form a, a group. We started talking about music a lot and I found out he writes music and that he plays drums and guitar and I love music too. I've written a lot of music and so we just kind of hit it off right then. It's been kind of a roller coaster ride <laughs> actually. It was, it was pretty difficult being kind of a recluse. Um, emotionally, I felt like I didn't really connect with, you know, the general public. I had to really scale back my work and I eventually just stopped working altogether. Um, so I didn't have a source of income. It was very emotionally stressful because I didn't know what I was gonna do as far as paying rent and getting food. Um, I was also embarrassed to go out in public, so I, I didn't want to see any of my friends really or go out and do anything too social. I came over one time and was just kind of talking to James and visiting with him and kind of noticed that he didn't have a whole lot of firewood. We live in a little cottage and we have a, we, we heat our house with firewood and uh, because I wasn't physically able to go out and chop wood and gather wood and stuff, a bunch of guys would bring me truckloads of already chopped wood. We helped him out by just providing him with some firewood and we got a bunch of guys together and went up to by Aspen Grove and there were some trees up there and we just basically had some chainsaws and chopped up the trees and split the logs and gave them to James. And I was able to keep my house the whole winter because of what they did for me. About six weeks after I started this chemo treatment, 
my mom's house in Reno caught on fire. There was a huge brush fire. She called me up crying. She had to evacuate quickly, didn't know if her house had made it. Here I am 800 miles away. I, I didn't know what to do. I was physically unable to do anything. A couple of people, again, I told a couple of friends about it and pretty soon I had acquaintances and random strangers coming by and dropping off money to help me afford a plane ticket to fly out to be with my mom. You help somebody, you're kind of guessing, like, I hope they like this or, you know, but it was a real clear way that I could give service and feel good about it. Even though I didn't want to go out into public, I had people coming over and inviting me to go do stuff with them. Anybody was serving James, he was just kind of like, I don't really deserve this, I'm not really worthy of this like you guys are so great my birthday was three weeks after I started the chemo treatment and a whole group of people put together a surprise party for me you know he's just had a pretty good attitude the whole time I've never heard him complain about any of his health problems or anything people would start bringing me meals because I was not wanting to go out in the town it's something that I enjoy doing helping those who may need further help or help in something, because we all need help at some point. The experiences that James has been through um, have impacted the music that we perform, and yet he's been so positive and so driven still. Like, one time uh, he was just, he had been feeling ill, you know, all week long, but he was still um, wanting to practice, and so he, he called me up, and I, I was just stressed with school, but he, you know, had this illness, and he was still, still up to practice. When people hear the story about James, I think that they will feel a, a greater motivation uh, to take the challenges in their lives and to run with them. I don't know. To, I don't know how to inspire other people to to change or to help other people because I think a lot of it comes from where your heart is and I think that's a really hard thing to change in people but I think just remembering that life's not about you. Service is fun. Service is, especially when you have a lot of people together which is what we had. We had like six to eight people just kind of having a good time and it wasn't a stressful thing and we, we all knew that we were doing something good so it's just kind of a fun atmosphere as well. You feel driven or not to do something, um, or feel the desire to do something, that you keep putting one step forward. And James continued to do that. He continued to inspire in his actions, even when it was difficult to do so. Uh, one last question. Um, what, do you hope, what do you hope people do, or um, what message do you want people to know when they, when they see this documentary? Even in our world where it seems like there's so much bad, there really is a lot more good than I think people recognize. And just the power of people coming together to help each other out is the greatest thing, I think, in this world. I stopped doing the chemo treatment back in May of this year, and I'm still doing one of the experimental drugs. I just went into Huntsman last week and they said I am responding to the drugs way better than anyone ever expected. The future looks bright for me.